بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد So I uh, gave Yusuf two days and it was not fair I didn't give any other surah two days but it's a bias of mine I have to give Yusuf two days It's one of the uh, surahs that we enjoy we enjoy reading I, mean, I don't feel that we spend enough time actually trying to understand what the uh, what the story is trying to tell um, which is in my opinion a big mistake because it's the only surah uh, that is just one story and as my brother was just uh, chatting with me it's actually a full story uh, we don't really find that uh, regarding any other story there's no other prophet who Allah subhanahu wa told the story of his life from beginning to end, to end uh, in one in, in one surah uh, all the other prophets their stories are sporadically uh, put out through the Quran in different parts uh, you have to put them together if you want to get the full story of Musa Ali said. You have to go to around 73 different surahs to get the full picture. Uh, Ibrahim, you're going to need a, a, around 15. Uh, Adam. So it, it depends on this. But Yusuf Ali said, no, it's all just compressed in one in one beautiful, beautiful surah from beginning to end. Till end. Um, I'm going to, uh, today I'm going to just talk, talk about this but from a different perspective. Yesterday I told you the perspective of Yusuf Ali said, how he um, held on to his ethics and morals regardless of what was happening in his life even though things got really ugly for him uh, he was mistreated by everyone uh, for a very long time yet he never changed even the last point that I, that I left for today is that when he finally became uh, king at the end of it right after he had forgiven his brothers after he did not you know uh, uh, perform an act of haram at all throughout the whole 40 50 years of his uh, of his experience even at the end when they prostrated him or they honored him, alayhi uh, salam, right? You would think at that moment that maybe a bit of, uh, of self-esteem, right? Or you know, self-recognition would enter his heart. You read the, the dua that he made at the end, and you know that even at that moment, the shaitan uh, is try, trying to get into, maybe get Yusuf, to, you would feel like the shaitan is struggling with Yusuf, trying to get him to make just one mistake and giving him good reason for it. Look Yusuf, like you have every reason to make this mistake. Make this mistake and then make istighfar, you'll be fine. Like, uh, I have people doing way worse things than making istighfar. And Allah is accepting. Just do this, nothing. He can't penetrate. So he comes to him at the moment when he is finally, he has closure. He is, his parents are there and his brothers are there. And they're doing what he had seen in the dream. So Yusuf knows that he has made it. He has done the right thing this whole time. And Allah subhanahu wa is happy. So what does he say? Rabbi, qad ataytani min al-mulk wa'allamtani min ta'wil al-ahadith faqir al-samawati wal ard and the Dahkumu, he continued, and then at the end, what did he say? This is all, Ya Rabbi, you have given me this, and you, you've offered me this, and you've yeah, you brought your, my brothers from uh, after they made the mistake, and you brought my parents, you brought them from, uh, you know, from the middle of nowhere, you brought them all to me, and everything is, is coming to coming, uh, everything is coming together at this point. What does he say? Musliman, just allow me, Ya Rabbi, to die as a Muslim. And maybe when the good people come Yawm Al-Qiyamah to enter Jannah Maybe allow me to, de to, to attach myself to them uh, Somewhere at the, at the end Maybe somewhere at the end Allow me to attach myself to them In full humility alayhi salatu wasalam So even at the moment when you may think That maybe a little bit of vanity Just a little bit And I think he's You know most of us will say Yeah he, he probably deserves it <laughs> He probably deserves a bit of vanity at that moment maybe A bit of uh, you know self-recognition No Ya Rabb, just allow me to die as a Muslim and maybe attach me to the good people Yawm al Let's talk about the perspective of uh, someone else in this story Let's tell the story from the eyes and the mind of uh, Yaqub alayhi salam I've, al I've always find that, found that to be the most difficult part of understanding Surah Yusuf Trying to imagine this story um, in, in the mindset and from the perspective of Yaqub alayhi salam. I told you that the, uh, the purpose of Surah Yusuf for three things is an attitude. The purpose is giving you an attitude. The attitude is that I will not change. I won't compromise my ethics and morals. I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I won't give up. That's, that's basically the, the attitude that is given. Yusuf alayhi salam taught us how you hold on. You don't, you don't compromise any of your fundamentals, any of your ethics or morals. However, Yaqub teaches you the other two things. Yaqub alayhi salam is a father who had a son amongst his children who was a bit different. He had a kid that had a spark about him. There was something special. This kid was ahead of his time. He was older than his age. This kid was wise. This kid was serious, was sincere. 
We all love all, all our children, but you know, there's sometimes a child who, who seems to be, you just, they just have something different in them. And it's, it's normal for the heart of, of the parent to have a certain level of love in their hearts. Not, it's not a matter of, 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 uh, of, of negative bias. It's just th this person seems that, they, that they're going to mature earlier. They're going to do more with their lives. They're going to achieve more. So Yaqub, that's all it was. He had Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf at a very young age was interested in what Yaqub alayhi salam was interested in. Yaqub, ya Yusuf alayhi salam was thinking uh, big, uh, the bigger picture. He was thinking faith. He was thinking life accomplishments. He was thinking great things. His brothers weren't. His brothers were completely interested, were only interested in play. Going out and you know, hunting and having a good time. Which is it's fine. He, he didn't fault them for it. I didn't say Yaqub didn't fault his kids for it, but he had one that was different. And then the thing that we dread the most as parents, <laughs> what will keep you up at night, the fear that can cause you to panic, that can take sleep out of your eyes, not for a day or two, but for years, that can change your life from someone with a smile on his face to someone who has no joy in their life whatsoever. <laughs> you lose your child. It's not that the child dies. Sometimes that's easier because there's closure. Because you know the child is under the ground. It's hard to accept. I, I, I'm not arguing that point at all. Probably the most, one of the most difficult things is to lose your own offspring, you lose your children. But for you to lose your child and not know what happened, for them to be kidnapped, Wallahi, the nightmare of every parent that, that I think ever existed. And it happened to Yaqub. And not to any of his children, but the child that in his heart he felt was going to do the most and achieve the most. A level of sorrow that is impossible to explain. He is told that, but to make it even worse, to make this worse, he now suspects that the ones who actually did that to his child are his other children. You understand how hard it is for him to continue to love his other children. When he knows on a subconscious level that they did that to Yusuf. He knows, he can't prove it, but he knows inside. But it's a lie. You're showing me the blood on the shirt, but there's something wrong. I know there's something wrong. I knew it before I sent him. Before I sent him, I told you, I don't want to send him. I, I, I have fear of sending him. He knew it. And then they do it. And now he has to love these kids for another 30 years. After they did that to Yusuf, to make it more difficult, to make it more difficult for himself, Ali salam. He has to deal with the sorrow on one level, and then he has to deal with this on a different level, knowing that his children did that. And living with that. But he said, Fasabrun Jameel. Fasabrun Jameel. I will show beautiful perseverance. Beautiful, beautified is probably the better way of putting it. Beautified perseverance. Because there's two types of perseverance. There's perseverance where you are accepting what Allah gave you. And there's perseverance where you don't really accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. You are angry on si inside. You are very angry. You're doubtful maybe. You're, you're objecting, but you're not saying it out loud. But inside you're objecting. You don't like it. But you're perseverant. You're not making a problem. You're doing what you need to do. And then there's another type of perseverance where it's beautified. You accept. This is, what, this is the hand you dealt me out of. Alhamdulillah, I've accepted. I have no problem. Alhamdulillah. I don't like it, but Alhamdulillah, I'm accepting. I'm going, to, I'm going to show perseverance with a smile on my face. And he does, alayhi salam. And he continues like that throughout his life. And then another moment comes, many, many, many years later, where they tell him, we, when, when the years of, uh, of, 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 of starvation and hunger, and they said, we can't get any more food unless you send all your children. When we told them that we have a father, a mother, and a, and a brother, see, the, the system was, you would take a camel worth of food for each individual. So they went 10 of them, and they said, or they went nine of them, and they said, we have a brother, and a mother, and a father. So all together, we should get 12 camels. So Yusuf gave them 12 camels initially, but said, I'm not gonna give you 12 camels again. You need to bring your brother with you. I understand you can't bring your father and mother, they're elderly, but you need to bring your brother. I, this is not, uh, it's not how we do it here. So now the brothers have to explain. You need to send uh, Ben Yamin with us. You have to send him. Same problem, repeating itself yet again, yet again. Exactly, the same, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same, the same thing. They tell him. أرسل معنا أخانا نقتل. Send him with us so we can bring the food, or else Yusuf won't give us anything. He won't give us not even the nine. He'll give us nothing. We have to. You know, the, the king of Mosul will give us not, nothing unless we bring everyone with us. We have to bring it Ben Yamin with us. قال لن أرسله معكم حتى تؤتوني موثقا من الله لتأتونني به. I won't send him this time unless you swear and you sign with me a verbal contract that you will bring him back. إلا أن يحاط بكم unless an army somehow comes and takes him out. 
and you have no way to defend yourselves, and then that's fine. It has to be by force that he doesn't come back. When they swore and they gave their covenants, قَالَ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَا نَقُولُ وَكِيَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى is a witness of this. He'll take care of it. And then he gives them, a, he gives them advice. Even though they've done what they've done. يَا بَنِيَّ يَا بَنِيَّ لَا تَدْخُلُوا مِنْ, لا تدخلوا من بَابٍ وَاحِدٍ وَدْخُلُوا مِنْ أَبْوَابٍ مُتَفَادِقَةٍ He gave them the advice he needed to give them alayhi salam. There's nine of you. Uh, it's never wise to all do the same thing at the same time because a catastrophe could, could, end, could end everything. So enter from different doors at different times. It's just better. And the ayah tells us this is Yaqub alayhi salam's hikmah. So they go and Yusuf alayhi salam holds on to Bani Yameen and then they have to go back to Yaqub alayhi salam. He sees them coming from afar, he sees how many? Seven camels. He sees seven people only. He doesn't, why? Because Bani is not there and the older brother stayed behind. He said, I can't go and face my father again. I, after what I've done the first time, I can't go and tell him again. I can't go tell him, yet I lost your son yet again. I'm not going to do that. You guys go back. Tell him. Tell him what happened. Tell him the, he stole, even though he didn't steal. So they go back to Yaqub and he sees seven people coming back. I want you to imagine Yaqub alayhi sorrow. He just, he sees seven. He knows right away. I am 100% sure. He saw seven, he knew. He knew, Benjamin is not with him. Without even making the faces out, he knew that he had lost one, the second one. But he has to wait for them to come and tell him. So they come and tell him, this is what happened. This time, they actually, they were actually honest. They ask everyone. Ask the people we were with. Ask the, the caravan we came with. Ask everyone. He stole. We're honest. The first time they said, You're not going to believe us even if we were honest. What they said. They were young. They didn't know how to lie. Even they, they sucked at lying. They didn't know how to lie. They, you're not going to believe us, even if we're honest. So what do you mean, even if you're honest? I mean, you're not honest. But but that was it. That's how they made it. They didn't know how. This time they were honest. No no no. We, we we we. He actually did this. So he says the same thing. Beautify perseverance. I'm going to show that again. Maybe. With the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll be reunited with them both again. Jamia, right? All of them. Now he's... Then he walks away. After they chatted about what happened, and they're done, he takes a few steps, he walks away. Away from the eyes of his children. He says, oh my, oh my sorrow. Ya is, asafa is, is a word the Arabs use. Saying, oh how, my, how horrible my sorrow is. Oh the pain, basically. That's what he's saying. Ya asafa ala Yusuf. What about, what do you mean Yusuf? The one that was lost this time is Ben Yamin. Yusuf has been dead for 30 years as far as you're concerned. Not in the heart of a father. Not in the heart of a father. Well, maybe in some, but not Yaqub's. Yaqub had hope. Yaqub had trust. Yaqub trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He trusted till the last moment that inshallah he'll bring them back to me. He'll bring, even, the, even if they never came back, that is how he went by his life. And that is how Muslims are supposed to go by their lives. Inshallah he'll bring them back. They'll come back again. 30 years later, inshallah, I'll see them again. Inshallah, I'll see them again. And then he began to sob. Because now he's lost two kids. He couldn't hold it anymore. He was old. Have rahmah upon your parents when they get old. He was old. In his 80s, 90s. And he starts to sob and he cries so hard that he can't see anymore. His vision stops. He can't see. And the, the brothers come by and they say, Yusuf. It's always Yusuf this, Yusuf that. Every time something happens, you have to remember Yusuf and how you lost Yusuf and how Yusuf died. We could we heard we didn't hear enough of him when he was alive, and now we can't hear enough of him after he's dead. You're gonna keep on calling upon Yusuf and being sorrow upon you, sorry upon Yusuf or for Yusuf until you kill yourself. Harada until you kill yourself. With, with sorrow and with anguish. So what was his answer? No, that's not what he's doing. That's not what he's doing. And he explained to them, he, he, he corrected their problem. No, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not reminding myself of my sorrow until I, until I lose my life or kill me. No, no, what I'm doing, Indeed what I am doing, all that I am doing is I am complaining, I am expressing my sorrow, my pain, my anguish. I am expressing my sorrow and my pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because no one else wants to hear it. No one else is interested in it, so he's the only one that I can express it to. So I express it to him. 
I know from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I know from His wisdom and from His judgment, that which you do not know. And I have hope in Him like you do not have. And then he says, Ya Bani Yadhabu, oh my sons, go. فَتَحَسَّسُوا مِنْ يُوسُفَ وَأَخِيهِ Go and look for Yusuf and his brother. Go and see if you can find them, bring them back. Apparently all of his life he was reminding them, you lost Yusuf, right? Look for Yusuf. No, he was eaten by a, by a wolf. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. Look for him. Understanding? He knew it all the whole time. I can't imagine how he lived with his other children. Wallah, I can't do it. I cannot imagine how he was able to live with the children. I can't, I can't imagine. But he did, alayhi salam. And they grew up to be decent human beings because he did a good job. He could have easily threw them out of the house and, they, and none of this story would have, this whole story would have sounded very different. <laughs> Go look for him. يُوسُفَ وَأَخِيهِ وَلَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ And never, one of the basic ayat of the surah, and never lose hope in the rawh. The word rawh uh, comes, it's, it's the same jadr uh, uh, or the same uh, derivative of ruh, of spirit. So rawh is basically not just the spirit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the, but the mercy and, 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 uh, and generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word rawh is a very special word. Do not ever lose hope in his plan, subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Indeed, no one loses hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except those who have no faith at all. You're taught never to lose hope. Even if, have trust in him, just don't lose hope. Regardless of what, even if you die without getting what you wanted, don't lose hope. Because if you don't get it now, you get it later. The time will come where you will get what you're looking for, inshallah. So imagine the star, sorrow, and then at the end, he is reunited with Yusuf and with Benjamin. The story of Yusuf is different than Hud and the seven stories in Hud. In what way specifically? That is the story of success. All the stories in Hud ended with Adab, all of them. All the stories of Hud ended, ala bu'dan li kada, ala bu'dan li aad, ala bu'dan li thamud. They're going to all be punished, but not the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. The story of Yusuf in itself for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam was hope, the story itself. He got to hear a story of someone who did it, who actually succeeded. Because all he's been told is Nuh tried, didn't work out for Nuh. Okay, well who else tried? Who Did he work out for him? No, no, everyone got uh, destroyed. Well, who else? There's Salih. What about Salih? He must have done it. No, nope. Salih didn't do it either. What about Lut? No, nope. not Lut. Ibrahim. Ibrahim didn't have enough followers to, to say that he was actually successful. He didn't have enough followers. Just his family members listened to him. Every single prophet he's given doesn't end well. And then he's given this story. That within its own essence is a hope. That Yusuf was successful. Not only did he reunite his family, he united a country in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he got to hear that alayhi salam. So not just what Ya'qub did, also the story of Yusuf with the Prophet was trust, trust in Allah. <laughs> show some trust, show some faith. Show some faith. And don't give up. Let's take a look at Yusuf Alayhi trajectory. So you understand how life works. So Yusuf Alayhi Salaam, we're shown at the beginning, he's at the highest point. He is seeing a dream of greatness. And his father loves him the most. And is teaching him. وَكَذَلِكَ يَجِدَ بِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَيُتِمُّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ كَمَا أَتَمَّهَا عَلَىٰ أَبَوَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقَ You're going to be like Ibrahim and Ishaq are your grandfathers, your great grandfathers. You're going to be a prophet like them, you're going to be educated, you're going to be a man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's on the top of the world and then he goes within 12 hours to the bottom of a well. To the bottom of a well, sitting there, lonely, child. Hungry and thirsty and scared, crying. No one's hearing him, thrown by his own brothers, betrayed by his own blood, sitting there for a number of days, we don't know how long. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes him from the bottom of a well, and now he's living in the castle of Aziz Musr. He's living as if he is his son, even though he's not. He's being treated as if he, he has a big bedroom and he has great he has covers and food and he has people to serve him. He goes from the bottom of the well to living in, in the house of Aziz Musr. And then he goes from there to the to jail, down to jail again. Seven, eight, nine years of his life he still he spends in jail, unjustly. And then he goes from jail to being Aziz Muslim himself. He's not living in the house of Aziz Muslim anymore. He's going to be Aziz Muslim himself. See, that's that's how it works. So as Yusuf tells you, this is how life works. You see, it goes up and down. That's how it is. That's how he made it. So what are you supposed to do? You have to have the right attitude. You have to have the right attitude. 
because not having the right attitude won't change the fact that it's going to look like that. That's how it's going to be. Sometimes the, the downs are more than the ups. Sometimes the ups are more than the downs. But regardless, it's not going to change for you or for me. There's nothing personal about this. It's not personal. Allah subhanahu wa dislikes you or dislikes me or, or likes this person. No, no. It's just how it is. It's ups and downs. What is your attitude? What will make life livable? What will make this thing bearable is your attitude. What is your attitude towards all of this? Just go back to Yusuf. At certain points in his life, it was very easy for him to lose hope and to lose composure and to lose iman and to lose faith and to lose any level of rahmah in his heart for any living thing at all. And to hate life and to hate everyone. Very easy. Very easy. But he didn't, alayhi salam. He didn't. Because that is what prophets teach. That life is like that. It's an up and down. It's a roller coaster. And all you really have is your attitude. You just hold on to what you know is right. This is who I am. This is, these are my ethics. These are my morals. I will continue to live this way. You can throw at me whatever you got. Throw your best shot at me. I'm not going to change. I'm never going to lose my hope and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll, I'll, never, I'll just never stop. I'll never give up. I'll never give up. That, that, that is basic. Qul, that, at the end of the surah, is it, what does it say? Qul hadihi sabili. Say, this is my way. This is how I live my life. I do Allah. I call on the name for the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With true knowledge, with true insight. I know what I'm saying. Insight. I understand what's happening. I have the right attitude. Him and all those who follow him. You think the Prophet didn't learn from all this? I'll give you examples. I'll give you examples of how we learn from all of it. Yusuf lost his dad. And the Prophet ﷺ, when this surah was revealed in the 10th year or, or before, lost Abu Talib. He, he lost his dad a long time ago. But Abu Talib was the closest thing he had to a father figure. He was going to lose Abu Talib as well. So he, he, he made sure he knew how to do that والسلام, from, from watching Yusuf hold himself and carry himself. And then Yusuf was thrown out of his country. Yusuf was not allowed to grow up or to achieve anything in his country. He had to do it somewhere else. And the Prophet ﷺ was, was coming his way. He was going to be forced out of Mecca. And Yusuf ﷺ, achieved his goal and the Prophet ﷺ was also going to be able to achieve his goal you see not only the Prophet ﷺ, you learned that but the moment when the kuffar of Quraysh after Fatih Mecca after he already conquered stuff after the apology was worthless because he already he's already stronger than them and they come and say they come and say Akhun Kareem Akhun Kareem you've always been kind forgive us after 22 years after 23 years of us hating you, trying to kill you, taking everything valuable from you, throwing you out of your country, making sure you lost your, your wife and your children and all those around you, please forgive us. So he told them exactly what, uh, what Yusuf السلام, told his brothers. There is no hard feelings upon you today. Allah will forgive you. And he is the most merciful of all those who are merciful. And Ali ibn Talib would tell everyone who, who, did, who, who, who had fought the Prophet and they weren't sure how to approach him, he would just say, go to him and say, Tallahi, laqad Allahu alayna, wa in kunna la khati'in. Just say to the, to the Prophet what the brothers of Yusuf said to him, and he will immediately answer you the way Yusuf did. And that's, that's the trick they used, all of them. They would come to the Prophet and say the same thing. Laqad Allahu alayna, wa in kunna, they, don't, they don't know the Quran, but they're saying it because that's what they were taught to say. So they say it, and the Prophet وسلم, doesn't hesitate. He says what Yusuf alayhi salam says. Is that how you learn? That's how you learn. That's how you learn. There's a basic ayah, is it time? There's a basic ayah in Surah Yusuf, the ayah that everything kind of uh, rotates around in this beautiful surah and its meanings. He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, those who show piety and those who show perseverance, rest assured, this is what the ayah is saying, this is, the, this is how it works in Arabic into English. Rest assured, be very, very sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not will not waste the reward and he will not lose the reward of those who showed excellence. Those who showed excellence in their attitude and their behavior, those who showed piety and showed perseverance, rest assured Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not forgotten about you and you will be rewarded. And that's the ayah that the surah kind of rotates around. Surah Yusuf, Yunus gave us an intellectual concept to hold on to. Surah Hud gave us a social one to hold on to. And Surah Yusuf gave us a spiritual, it gave us an attitude. Give us an attitude of how we're supposed to go through our lives. If we learn it, then khayr, and if we don't, then you know, maybe read the surah again and try and get it from it. Subhanallah.